welcome back to The Watch. And Oz and myself, we here at The Watch, we're Australians. Yep. And Australians have a really wonderful, long-standing tradition of uh, not giving a crap about tipping. Yep. Yep. And that should be the honest, true standard. A product is given at a price. You pay for the price. The person selling it should be grateful that you purchased for your, you know, customer ship uh, and uh, transaction ended yep seems fair seems good seems positive yep the customer shouldn't have to pick up uh you know the minimum the below minimum wage that you paid them the the employees not only like, that <laughs> like the employee should not need to expect tips as standard exchange mm. for their labor yeah expectation the contract that they get into they need to understand that the payment and, and this is like the person offering the contract should not say tips are going to cover you know the cost for your labor here no 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 no. the money that they are presenting of your wage is what they are willing to offer for your job and if you enter into the job you are accepting that as a fair wage for your labor and if you mm. don't think it's fair don't take the job mm flat mm. uh in terms of the minimum wage argument i've just seen too many cases of minimum wage being raised and people losing jobs completely that's what happens that's what happens it's the big mac index tim paul mm. explained it really well mm -hmm. you raise the price of how much a uh, uh you raise minimum wage then the person who works to make the big mac mm. the big mac becomes more expensive the person who works at the real estate agent who wants to buy the big mac it's more expensive he doesn't mm. buy it you know and just things go up and up and up and up all the way up to the top Inflation, and yep. I'm not saying this is not a not a problem. Cost of living is ridiculous, ridiculous, evil. Yeah, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. I know entire families, both members working two jobs, mm -hmm. who have moved in with their uh, parents because there's simply nothing that they can do. <laughs> like it's 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 we need it. We need a civil war. We need a revolution. We need some no shad. Seriously, what other situation is there? Just vote harder. Yeah, ideally, yes. But they, they won't let us. Get, a, get someone in power that actually, can actually understand. A, a, but how do we do that when our elections are fortified? Our ones aren't, but the... If they're, if they're, if they're fortified in America... Actually, Australian elections are pretty secure. But, but one of the reasons is, is that you know, a lot of it is in-person paper ballots. And stuff. Okay, okay. We'll All have right, to disagree. Okay, okay. And this could be an area that I'm just very ignorant on. So, but cost of living we can agree on is going evil. insane. Yep. Uh, and so I understand the other flip side of this of, uh, you know, wage increase. The thing is, though, more people are employees over employers. Mm. And they don't understand the employer perspective. I understand it because I am an employer, mm. right? And with the economy being so bad, and with YouTube just absolutely nuking um, search discoverability for our con Shadow Versity content to new viewers, right? Got videos on this, we've discussed about it. It's not just happening to me, it's happening to many creators. Mm. Uh, Bagish Clay mentioned it, uh, several videos I've found, independent websites, they changed something in January. So that has made revenue cray through the floor. And like, you know, I know that there are people that need more money for what you know, cost of living, but at the same time as an employer, I literally can't afford it. Mm. And the only option ends up being that someone might have to get let go if I can't figure out a way to correct it, mm. which is, that's a lot the case for a lot of companies. They cannot increase wages. And if you force them to, their only option is to fire people yeah. and have less employees. Yeah. And so these employees that wanted more security ends up having no security, no job, no money at all. Mm. Where are people supposed to, and so clearly forcing minimum wage isn't the answer either. Mm. All right, we are in some really, really tough times. Okay, but regardless of what we're saying, okay, people do enter into jobs through agreement, mm. right? And if you agree to getting paid for a certain job, you should not expect the customer that is already agreeing to pay a certain amount for a product or service to then pay more okay uh, and then be upset if they don't give you a tip mm. after the fact 
And I also think it's scummy if a, if a company employer is actually paying people less than they could afford or is fair to give them based on the fact that they can get tips and get more money. Yeah. I, I want to know where this where the problem for this begins. Is there a beginning to it? I don't know. It's a cultural thing because like here, we're, we're, Australians can be particularly backwards, right? right? Especially with how our government behaves. But at other times, we can be particularly enlightened group of people. Mm. And this is one of the times when we are the enlightened group where tipping, don't give us stuff about <laughs> Tipping is not a thing here. Mm. I mean, it's personal, but like if someone goes beyond their job, even us Australians, on the rare occasion when there is a truly exceptional job given, mm. I have given people bonuses, even uh, so tips as well, for an actually exceptional job. There was one time uh, I, I stayed up and documented that I was up for, I think, three days straight editing the same video for you. <laughs> it was the Star Wars uh, Darth Vader vs Luke Skywalker. Mm. I had my I had my timestamps. I got four hours of sleep in that full three days. I also had meth pills. Um, you wouldn't guess. But yeah, you gave me 1100 bucks for that. Yeah. yeah, you went above and beyond. And, and that was more than what we initially agreed to. Yes, I lost <laughs> several brain cells. <laughs> yeah, Never to be redeemed. So even us Australians, of course, when we see a good job, mm. we will reward it. But in the normal exchange of goods and services, you agree to the price, mm. you pay the price, and there should be no either entitlement to think more, expectation, or guilt throw it at someone for not giving more after the fact yeah but tell you what when i go to the us right i forget tipping and people get like the people i forget to tip they get they have been legitimately pissed at me and i was like why was he upset and i was like you forgot to tip him mm. i was like oh i'm australian we don't do that but there's a culture of tipping in the us yeah a an idea has been seeded out into the ether oz uh and it's in regards to games Hmm. that if you play a game, a single-player game that you've purchased, already paid money for, right, that there should be an inbuilt option to be able to tip the developer. Why? Because they want money, and this is a way for them to potentially I, get more money. <laughs> I know they want money, but why should I have to pay them more after I've already spent $70 on it? That's, and, a, and that's a great question, but they're trying to pose that. That's not really the question, Oz. Hmm. It's about giving people who are particularly happy with the product an option to give them a little bonus. I did that when I had The Witcher 3 pirated for like three years straight. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, del after playing it for hundreds of hours, deliberately went and bought it when it was mm -hmm. on sale for like $27 just to give them the money because they bloody earned it, man. That I was think, Polish. I think DLC is another example of people willing to throw a couple of extra bucks at a, a game because they like it mm -hmm. um, to show a bit of extra support. And here is where my kind of philosophy has a bit of an issue. Because mm -hmm. right? like, all right, these game companies, right? would want to do something like this. Mm. I would be perfectly, perfectly okay if at the same time they gave an option to refund at least half the price of the game if I did not like it. Well, I feel like a lot of people would take that. <laughs> I would take it. It's like, uh, be, put your money where your mouth is. Mm. Like, let's really test how... And, like, you could integrate into Steam that you can only have this option if you've played, I don't know, uh, 20 hours of the game, 100 hours of the game. Mm. Um, that's hard to say because people just turn it on and not play it, but maybe if, I don't know, if it could track actual achievements in the game mm. joined with um, gameplay, all right? And then you could say, no, I didn't like it, give me <laughs> half the money back. But if they did like it, they'd throw more money mm. at it, right? Mm. I would be very... And then maybe the option is only open for a week or, or a couple of days. Because hmm. um, then you don't want people who play the game to death. They did like it, but then they were strapped with cash. It's like, oh, I didn't, I, there's ways to make it work, though. I think there are ways to make it work. Yeah. And they won't do it. They won't, no. But I think there's some companies, game companies that actually might choose to do that option. For instance... Let's just, let's give an example. Let's, let's pick a game and hypothetically say it has an option for games to give an additional tip based on an expression of uh, um, uh, satisfaction with the product or get a, a half, you know, amount refund of what they purchased on it. Mm. What would people, what would you reckon most gamers would do who were purchased 
Hell divers. Uh, they would definitely give an a, extra bit of money. Yeah, because yeah, it yep, seems... Yeah, I'm one of them and I did. O overwhelming satisfaction with the game. Yep. That not only are they happy with the price point, they might be willing to show support to the developers and give a, something Absolutely. extra. They're a small team. They work really hard. They're great community managers. Give more money. Okay. Uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. No, more like <laughs> Suicide Squad Kill that game. Um, See, so it's like, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm willing to entertain the tipping, you know, thing if you put your money where your mouth is. To go both ways. That game is more like commit suicide, <laughs> apostrophe, squad. Now, this comes from a statement from Mike Ibarra, which is a former, uh, as the quartering says, former Blizzard president and current president of Microsoft suggests gamers be asked to tip developers at the end of a single player, of single player games. Why a single player? I, I mean, live service games are con usually constant, you know, yeah. uh, especially if you have to pay to play like, like um, MMOs and things. I've thought about this idea for a while as a player since I've been diving into single player games lately. When I beat a game, there are some that just leave me in awe of how amazing the experience was. At the end of the game, I've often thought, I wish I could give those folks another 10 or 20 dollars because it was worth more than my initial 70 dollars and they didn't try to nickel and dime me every second. First of all, $70 is a lot of money. Like, that's 70 US, by the way. Mm. For us Aussies, it's like 120 Games like uh, HCD, I forget what that is, God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Elder Ring, etc. I know $70 is already a lot, but it's an option at the end of the game I wish I had at times. Some games are that special. Hmm. The way you reward someone fulfilling or exceeding your expectations for goods and services is to continue to buy and pay for their goods and services mm. or to leave good reviews. Yeah, yeah. It seems greedy for me if they only did it, just give us more money. It's like, all right, be honest. If you want to, an actual option to be able to reward people mm. for satisfaction, give an option to give a penalty for dissatisfaction. Yeah. Mm. Look, this is just, to me, this is just morality from an incredibly rich person, right? This is someone being like, oh, you know what? This person did a great job. Here's a, here's a tenner, here's a 20, mm. you know? But but is that money going to go to the developers? There's a no. good question. That's a very good question. Like, it's probably not going to go to the actual hardworking game devs or anything like that. Mm. Like, the actual uh, game companies or publishers and stuff like that probably just put that money into their own bonuses and things. It's going to go straight into the investors' pockets, the CEO's bonus. Like, <laughs> they're not going to get any of that. Why would they give it to them? <laughs> it's just free... Unless the game is, like, in the red and needs to, you know, money to pay off its debts and things. But I just don't... I. I can't stand this. It's what's it called the um, the gig economy. You know okay, this yeah. whole this. Oh man. I, I... Well, he says I know most will dislike this idea. By the way, I realise we are tired of tipping in everything else. <laughs> Us Aussies, we don't. But he likes. But I view this different from a uh, pressure to tip type scenario. Many face and give feedback on. What the like? There's already options to pay someone back for the good work they do. That's to buy more stuff from them. What are, like, I, I see, I think a really easy thing for people to do exactly what it's saying here. Like, I'm, I'm talking like one for one, almost perfect example, is to gift the game to a friend. Yeah. If you literally want, but it's like, oh, that's too much because the game is too much they want, it's like, DLC. Oh, nearly most games have DLC options yeah. these days. Or, you know, so the de developers could set up a... A, a yeah. paper, paper uh, what's it called? Patreon. Patreon. Like, I set up a Patreon for my YouTube, which yeah. I do very little content. And the people who, people still pay for my Patreon. Mm. And yes, years from now, you will be found guilty of encouraging a terrorist organization. However, thank you very much. It's not a terrorist. This is an omission. Although I do, uh, um, you know, disavow. Disavow everything Oz and Oz. We need that. We need to make a shirt. I disavow. Oz. Yes, I disavow Oz. Oh. We, need, oh, we need the opposite too, because like the the people who did I love Elvis also sold I ha hate Elvis. Okay. So I avow Oz. No. <laughs> Big thumbs up. No, because they will be accused of supporting terrorists. No, we're just trying to make money off of people uh, who support terrorism. All right, so back on track. Back, <laughs> back on track. Um, we also have a membership, so you can support us here on Night's Watch. Yes, support You're... Night's Watch before me. Yes, we need that money. I'm yes. paying for him. Yes. So, <laughs> by paying us, you help me pay him. So... 
Are we, are we the baddies? Are we asking for tips? Well, to be fair, we're not multi-billion dollar companies who are, you know, mm. just doing mm. nothing but pump up the investors. Mm, maybe. I mean, we're not asking them to give anything to consume our content already, apart from their time. They're not yeah. paying essentially for this, even though they're <laughs> technically ads, but, you know. We have their life force now. <laughs> <laughs> you have, we have taken your life. Got your soul. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is some nuance here though okay uh i, I ultimately i think it's pointless because like i said if you really want to um tip the developer dlc gift the game someone else yeah easy as that yeah uh and i don't like tipping culture and i think propagating it even more is uh, is like i think it's bad because it's ultimately implying that you know you need you you should be giving more than the free exchange of you know money for goods and services that you've entered into yeah and ultimately there are a million and one different ways and a million and one different services that can be given and uh, exchanged to receive money and for whatever reason you know whether you get sentimental value from liking something someone says or does or feeds mm -hmm. you like anything right this is just uh, another yeah. thing i uh, know i mean yeah. uh, you know anything at all yeah yeah I'll, I'll, prostitution that exists I'll, like and you know sexual favors don't point at me when you say that. <laughs> Although, subscribe to Team Roz. <laughs> We've got feet pics and shower I milk. do not um, uh, condone the, that exchange. Though it's very prominent in Hollywood, I hear. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that type of um, exchange for can we Can we get Jennifer Lawrence on the show to, to question her about this? <laughs> Are you willing to exchange for that, Oz? I'm willing to exchange a sexual favour with her. <laughs> I like Jennifer Lawrence. You're crazy if you don't. <laughs> anyway. Is she the one who, like, you know, was the first in everything? First in everything? Yeah, she was the first action star. She was the first in my homework folder. What do you guys think? It's, there is some discussion to be had on the topic, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. And as always, stay on watch.